guys, this is Kellis from True North Social Hair, and today I'm going to go over how to create a new page within Shopify. This is something uh, a lot of our clients ask for uh, when we put together a Shopify store. Uh, they need a little help walking through how to create pages, and creating pages is very simple. So uh, just to give you guys a hint on how I generally like to work, I'm in the back end of uh, my Shopify store here. This is a test in instance we set up for demonstration purposes. If I click my little online store button here, uh, it will pop open the front end of my store in a new tab. And I like going back and forth between uh, my Shopify admin and the front of my Shopify store, just so I can kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at and make sure I've saved all my changes, that everything's good to go. So let's take a look at how to create a new page. So pages are down here in the online store menu. If I click on that, this will reload and I'll see a new list of options here. And I want to click on pages. So this gives me the pages menu and I'll see a list of all the pages that have been created in my store so far. Uh, but let's look at how to add a new page. So I'm going to click the Add Page button over here. And this will give me all the basic stuff I need to create a new page. Uh, every page will need a title. So I'm going to add a new page to my store called Terms and Conditions, which uh, most online stores will have. And I need to add some content to my page. So I just generally happen to have a uh, default set of terms and conditions here because we work with a lot of different clients. Sample terms of service. Let's open this up. And uh, I actually got this from Shopify themselves. If you Google uh, Shopify sample terms of service, you, you'll be able to find this document. And uh, this is a good sort of starter for any sort of terms of service you might want to do. I'm just going to paste that right in there. And I am going to save my page. So that's the basics of a page. This WYSIWYG editor here will allow me to add text, right? And as I scroll down the page, this thing, once I save the page, it will show me an SEO preview. Uh, it will Shopify will take the title of my page and make it the uh, the meta description title uh, when Google when someone Google's your terms of service if this page were to come up it would come up pretty much like you see it right here all right now as I mentioned I like to see my uh, whatever I'm working on on the front end of the site so I'm going to click this view button here and this will open this terms and conditions page. Uh, in a new window so I can kind of scroll down and see it. Now this is a good start um, but let's see I don't really need to say terms of service since I already have the page title up here maybe I want to make these bold let's say I want to edit this a little bit well I can go back in here and I've got this WYSIWYG editor which is very handy I think you'll see these kinds of WYSIWYG editors in most uh, most content management systems and Shopify has their own. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this stuff. And then I'm going to say overview. Okay, I want to make this bold. And actually, you know what? I don't want to make it bold. What I want to do here is I want to make this an H2. H2 is a semantic, semantic piece of formatting formatting in HTML and it just tells uh, Google like this is an important thing on the page. H1 is usually the page title up here and if you have subheaders underneath it um, H2 is a very common style that you would apply to them so I'm going to make these all H2 and this will kind of separate out different sections of my page A very standard way to uh, kind of edit some things so people can see what they're looking at. 
And terms and conditions and FAQ pages tend to have a lot of these. And there's lots of sections to this. It's a very common thing for e-commerce to have a lot of different little legal things that you want to have in here. I think generally the uh, basic things you want to outline in terms and conditions are your uh, shipping and return policy. Those are the things you'll get the most questions about. Um, and that will change a lot from store to store because depending on your type of product, uh, some products are very easily returnable, some are not. If you're selling food, someone has opened the package. <laughs> you obviously wouldn't want to take that back, but you know, for an uh, item of clothing or a pair of shoes, you might. Um, digital content, uh, that might be a tricky one. But let's see. Okay, so there's... See how quickly I was able to mark up headers for 20 different sections. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to I'm going to close everything on the front end here. And I'm going to click on view again. And now I see here's my H1 header for overview, section one, section two, general terms and conditions. OK, that's some great stuff. Now there's a few other things I want to do here. Let's say I wanted to add a link. Uh, this is my company, True North Social. And let's say I want to link to a website. All I really have to do here is copy this URL. And see, I've highlighted this text here. This is text I want to make into a link. So I can click Insert Link here. And I can paste some text into it. I can create a link title. This is very nice for uh, some SEO value. It'll just give Google another hint as to where I'm trying to send people. And let's say when I when people click on this link, I want it to open it in a new window. So I can insert my link, and now I can see this text turns purple and it's got an underline. I'm gonna hit my save button. I'm gonna go over here and refresh my page. And now I can see this is linking. I can click on it. And that works. So a uh, very common thing to do, add a link. Let's say I want to add a picture to this page. Terms and conditions pages don't usually have pictures. But let's say you were creating another type of page and you wanted to insert a picture. I, uh, I can get into my editor here. I can hover over this insert image here. And these are some images that are already in my system. I can upload this any, anything that's or I can uh, add any picture that's already in my file library. But let's say I want to upload something new off of my desktop here. Uh, let's see. I've got, uh, let's say I wanted to add a picture of some candy. Well, I can open that, upload my file, and I'll pick that one. Now, one thing, <laughs> it's a little tricky about the way Shopify has done this. Uh, they automatically format the picture to 480 by 480. Now, that's for, unless you have created a photo that is 480 by 480, this will not be the right size, right? So I have to click on here and say, I want this to be the original size. It also gives me a variety of different choices. But if I pick one of these, it'll force it to this size or within this, this boundary. If I want it to be the actual size of the photo, I need to pick original. And I can write some alt text here, which is always SEO friendly. It's best practice. Um, so I could say basket of candy, right? That's going to be my alt text. So I can insert this image. And now I can see that's been inserted in here. I can save this. And I can view once again on the front end. I can see there's my picture. There's my titles. There's my link. So, um, you can go through with the WYSIWYG editor and you can try any of these different controls. You can create lists, you can outdent, you can indent. A lot of the same things you would expect to do with uh, Microsoft Word formatting, that kind of thing. But this is a very handy little text editor. Now let's say for the sake of argument I wanted to put some HTML into my page. I've got this little button here that says show HTML and this will show me actual code involved for the page. Now you may be comfortable with uh, with writing code, you might not. 
in some cases you may have to, right? And one of the most common cases you would have to add some HTML to a page is if you wanted to add a video, right? So let's say I go to YouTube and I have a, uh, oh, let's see, Game of Thrones trailer I want to put into this page. So let's see, not... there's this picture and on YouTube, any video that you can find on YouTube will include this little share link down here. And when you click on it, it'll say share. And you wanna click on embed and this will give us some code. And this will say iframe, it'll give the width and the height, and you can copy this and paste it in just the way it is. And I'm gonna put this at the top of the page. I'm gonna have this be the first thing on this page here. So I'm gonna paste that in. I'm gonna hit save here. Let's go back and refresh my page. And now I'm seeing this video at the top of the page. Adding a video from YouTube is just that simple. If you wanna add a video from other places, it might be a little more complicated, uh, but this is the very easy way to do it. So you can see creating pages in Shopify is very, very simple, right? Now, one of the things you may ask yourself, and I've had many clients ask me this uh, as soon as we create a page is, well, where do people see this page on my site? Well, the answer is, they can only see this page if you if they have a link right now because we haven't added this page to the navigation in the header or the navigation in the footer. And this is because, believe it or not, there are some instances where you may not want to have a link to a page from within your navigation. You might want to create landing pages that, uh, if, say, if you run Facebook ads uh, and somebody clicks through to a landing page that has some special promotion on it, you might not want to add that to the navigation. So you don't have to. You can just create a page and not link it anywhere in the navigation. If you do want to add this to your navigation, um, you can, and we'll cover that in another video. Uh, just look through our blog and see if you can find our post on how to add uh, thing, how to edit, I should say, your navigation. That's all for today. Thank you.